Bobby Lopez here from Quick Fix Golf, along with my partner here, Darren Demaley. Hello, Darren. Hi, Bobby. How are you? I'm live in Myrtle Beach right now. It's beautiful yeah. out. He's live in Myrtle Beach. I'm live in Richmond, Virginia, and everybody else is live wherever the heck they are. All the way from Cucamonga. We have people that join us. So all you got to do is go to quickfixgolf.com. And you can get the link to join us. There's online class. It has the topics, list what topics there are and what have you. It has some sample prior classes, but we're going to be moving all the ones from the last two weeks over to the members only section. You have to be a member to see those anymore. But we did have them up there for a while. And uh, today we have a topic which is about clearing the hips. So uh, let's get started. I've got two examples up here, Darren. One is, you know, Molinari, and the other one's your friend Henderson. And I put these here because if you notice with Molinari, he hardly ever, he hardly moves his hips at all. And here Henderson makes quite an effort to work her hip back and up, which is primarily the look from all the ones that are fairly long hitters. I don't know how far Molinari hits it, but if his arms are fast enough, the ball isn't gonna care. So what what do you think about the hip clearing and does it is it useful, is it not? Is it the right thing to do or does it mess more people up than it helps? Yeah, you know, when I was growing up, the, you know, the Ben Hogan book was really big and all that book was, you know, people would talk about about the book is clearing the hips, clearing the hips. It's all in the hips, all in the hips. And um, it, it's uh, it's really player dependent. Like, for example, these two pictures here, I think the big difference with the hips here are because a Brooks hitting a driver and, and a Frankie here, he's hitting an iron. So I think that that's a starting point to understand how much the hips are gonna work, how much they're going to, um, uh, affect the, the kind of the angle of attack, so to say. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that's that's one of the things you'll see the difference between the iron and a driver. And then the other thing is it's dependent on how the club face is orientated in the swing. You know, the club face is going to dictate what the hips are going to do. And uh, the more open your club face is, the quieter your body has to be, the quieter your hips, the quieter your footwork. Um, and the more close the club face is in the swing, the more rotary and, and active and dynamic you need to be with the hips and the body. So to me, it's it's a couple things. You got to look at what the face is doing and and look at what what kind of shot you're trying to hit. Yeah, put Tiger up here, iron to iron. You can see his hips are more. Uh, oh, and and, and and you spoke about Hogan because he's hitting a fairway wood here. But uh, where, where do you go? Get over here. There he is. And you can see his hips. I turned a heck of a lot more than Molinari's. Look at Molinari's yeah. feet. His feet, his footwork is very quiet, just like Ernie Els. I think the pro I think the problem is, it, like you said, it's swing dependent. It depends on that person's swing, and you got these two gears in motion, the body and the arms, and you want to keep them in sync. And some people they start trying to work their hips real hard, and they get so far ahead of the arms that the whole thing goes completely on them. Yep, it's that's a commonality I see all the time, and people are trying to work their hips because maybe a friend of has told them or they see a video of Hogan, they're trying to do that, but in a lot of cases, it's the wrong thing to do. Yeah, I, I'd be more concerned with my arms. What are my arms doing? But my arms have a hold of the golf club, so that, you know, that's a direct connection between the golf club and you. And the hips, I think probably the less they move, the better, although I, I move mine a lot, I always have, but, you know, it was just natural for me, I guess. I cleared the hip real hard. One of the things that um, I, I really got to understand how the body works is with my paragolfer. 
you know, and I get a lot of paraplegics that come up and, um, and, and hit golf balls. And because of their inability to use their legs and their hips, they have a completely different golf swing than somebody who's able-bodied. And um, it's, it's quite a different golf swing when you can't use your hips and kind of shift with your, with your legs. And um, it, it's a very eye-opening experience when you watch somebody who's not using their legs uh, in a pair of golf or hit a golf ball because it's very, very arm and hand um, related. Boy, there's that guy who has that trick shot show, the Golf's Greatest Hour or something it's called. And he has he's a he's a paraplegic. Yep. And he uh he knocks the snot out of it with his arms and hands. But that's what's got a hold of the golf club. So um that that would be my number one concern. And then if I could turn my hips, I think of that as gravy or it's icing, not the cake. If I could turn my hips quicker and create a little more energy, okay, as long as it's not affecting the club face. As long as I keep yeah. that club face square. Yeah, and um, once again, very grateful to be around, you know, Nicholas and, and Jim Flick. And um, Flick would hit golf balls off of a chair all the time to help people understand the relationship of how the arms and hands swing versus uh, how the body moves. And by sitting in a chair, a little folding chair, it really stabilized his hips, stabilized his legs, and, and didn't allow them to move at all. So. Um, it's um for a lot of people the, the, the hips are such an overrated thought um because that the, they really don't need to use their hips much most people need to use their arms and hands first and that's really how nicholas learned the game if, if you look back um when he first started uh practicing under grout grout wouldn't let him use his legs for the first two years of his uh junior career so two years, imagine that, keeping your legs super still, keeping your hips still, and just hitting shots with your feet flat on the ground. So he learned to swing the arms and hands and, and release the golf club properly. But, you know, most people don't know how to release the golf club properly, but they want to learn to turn their hips, which is the complete wrong thing to do. And this is most people. I'm talking probably a good eight to nine out of ten people that kind of come through. Um, the golf course at, um, at Tupelo, and I'm sure it's the same up at Patterson, and and with all the videos that we get online. I, I, I noticed that most people they spin out real hard because they got an open club face. An open club face, they're going to spin, and they're trying to work their hips so hard, and they, you know, you you can do that all you want, and it's not going to equal releasing the golf club the right way, as you just said. No, and and. Um, unfortunately, we're not, you and I are not um, privileged to have some of the measuring devices that um, are out there. You know, like we had um, John Sinclair a couple weeks ago, and, and he took all these measurements of good players and poor players. And uh, he was specifically talking about the wrist position at the top, but they can measure, you know, how, how open your hips are at impact versus, um, you know, how your arms and hands are moving. And, um, and and I'm not, I'd love to see more information on that, you know, how, what the average turning of the hip is at, at impact and, and how uh, there's probably a direct relationship with the face there. There's, there's some numbers, I bet. There has to be. Yeah. Well, uh, John had mentioned, John Adams mentioned, he wanted to know, how do I know whether I've turned my hips or not? Well, here's the drill that David Toms does. He puts a, the, the, a stick in his pants, so he's using an old shaft. And, uh, and so he can see his hips turning. John used to have a spin-out problem where he spun out back on his back leg real quick, which would get you going over the top real in a, in a hurry if you don't watch out. But you see, he takes the stick puts it there, boom. Notice one thing, at address, that stick is not level. It's tilted up. Yeah, so this is an interesting video, and I've used this lots of different ways in trying to explain the hips. 
I wouldn't be a bit surprised if Tom's was trying to work on the hips going back. I had Gary Shaw out um, a, a little over two weeks ago, and he had relatively no hip turn on the way back. So um, if you don't have any hip turn on the way back and you have some hip turn on the way through, your timing's going to be way off. So my guess with this video here is that Tom's is exactly working on that as opposed to the hips turning through. Although, like I said, I've used it in both examples. Look at Hogan. Yep. Look at how much he turns his hips. Yep. See, and that's, that's how I was taught as a kid. I really worked my right hip back a lot and then spun it back the other way. But I came in from underneath and slammed the hands over real hard. So um, I was always releasing the golf club. I didn't spin yeah. over the top with it. Yeah, and then that's, that's a really good um, thought, I think, for most of our, our golfers, is they have to turn the hips in the backswing, right? You, you got to give your, your downswing some type of chance, right? And most people aren't really turning their hips. They're kind of, you know, I call it drifting away from the ball as opposed to turning. So um, watch, watch Arnie here. He actually, of course, this is in his later years, but uh, earlier, I've seen he turns his hips like over 40 degrees on the way back. You'd like oh, to, yeah, he was, there's a picture right there in our classroom down at your your place. It yep, shows on yeah. the top and he's got, you know, when he was younger and he was skinny, he had a huge hip turn. Unbelievable, unbelievable. The biggest that I've seen. I don't know, Karma Miranda had a pretty big hip turn. Oh, there you go. <laughs> But you see, his hips and everything are working with the swing. They're not working faster than the swing. Does that make any sense? His hip turn here also, David Toms, is working with the swing. They're not ahead yep. of the swing. It's not faster than the swing. No, but that's that's the definition of timing right there. The timing of the, the upper half and the lower half, the timing of the arms and, and the legs, and, and you're absolutely right. That's a really good description of it. It's moving. They're all moving together. Exactly. So you get right here, Molinari, and he's. So he does a little. He does a little shift over to his left foot here. Now what we don't know is maybe he's trying to hit a knockdown shot. He's trapping a little bit, and that might be why he did that little bit of a, a, a push to his left side. But you see, he doesn't clear his hip very well at all. I mean, it's okay. See, it does turn, turns nicely, but it's not the engine. And if you look at the down the line view, his club face is going to be um, on the on more the open side. Because he clams, clams the hands over. Exactly. Well, look look at his right hand grip. Watch this. Look at his right hand grip. Yep. If he do, if he doesn't hustle with the hands, he's going to leave it out to the right. Got to. Uh, and you know how much I love that right hand grip like that. I I'm know. That's, that's, that. that's why I brought that to your attention. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to see one of those grips live and in person, you're going to go see Darren. That's right. If you see me, you're only going to see me with a grip on Tito. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I heard Corona's going out of business. No. The Corona beer? Yeah, they're going, to, they're going to shut down that line. Yeah. It's probably made by somebody else, like Anheuser Busch or something. But uh, they're, they're shutting wow. down the, they're shutting down the line. They lost thousands. I mean, I think almost fifty percent in sales. You know, Corona means crown. It's just crown in Spanish. But look at look at the path of his shaft right there. Look at that. Now watch his hips. I mean, it's not bad. It's got some turn. Ernie's got more at a younger age. Look at his knee. See, his right knee will allow for more hip turn. He's got very quiet feet, Molinaro. Go ahead. Mark O'Meara in there? Mark O'Meara. I don't yeah. know that I have Mark O'Meara. You have Mark so O'Meara? He's, he's the definition of, of no hip turn. So if you see O'Meara at impact, his hips are really square to the, to the, um, to the target line. He doesn't have any rotation of the hips through the hit.
Because he's going to get locked and snap hook it, I guarantee you. That's 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 a move that if he left those hands released the way they should, he could snap hook it off a planet. You think? See right yeah, here? Oh yeah. Now right here, now watch. Well, ah, you could get trapped right here. Then eh, you snap hook it off the planet. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Let me see here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Monty, here you go. No, I'm in Omira. I know, but let's look at Monty. You want to see some hips? Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty this. good. Look at this. Look at the hips going on here like this. Let's bring it back the other way. Any complaints? His problem is somebody made noise in the... See, but he still sort of finishes like Nicholas in his videos. But that has a lot of motion, but he times it, you know, he he he, he times it very well. But I you know, you, you certainly wouldn't want to teach somebody to do that. But he's probably done that all his life and he gets away with it. Yep. Now let's open it up to questions and see. What the peanut gallery has to say about all this. Throw them at me. We got Darren here, so that's Wonder Boy to be able to answer your questions. Don't all talk at once. But right, I've opened up the mic. So who's got a question? See that we put him in a coma. I know. Well, I'll say something then. Um, you know, when I was growing up, Paul Azinger was a really big uh, influence to me. And, and he was very, he was in his prime, you know, kind of when I was in high school. And um, how did and you get a weak grip? Golf, yeah, his golf swing was all about rotation. I remember him, he used to work with John Redmond, who was out of Orlando. And Redmond would literally hold him by the belt line and rotate him through every shot he'd hit. They they both hit shots together. Redmond turning the hips, and Azinger swinging the club. Yeah, I've done that several times on the range with students. Where I came from the back, I tell them, I said, "This is going to be something you can tell your grandchildren how you had a Cuban stand behind you, and nothing happened." <laughs> when I get done, I tell them, I said, "Check and see if your wallet's still there." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he turns the hips. He still come, look look at his hands right there. It's amazing. You know, yep. if you've got a crummy grip, but if, but if you have an impact to match, it doesn't really matter. The ball is not going to know. Yep, you're exactly right. The ball is not going to know. All the ball is going to know is, that's what John Jacobs, remember John Jacobs, I told you I had a lesson with him in London once, and he said, the only thing that concerns me is, 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 is the face of that golf club. That's it. Yep. And he'd tap on it, you know, and he'd, he'd tap on the face, he'd say, yep. Yo, man, you've got to get the face of that golf club right. Because <laughs> back yep. then I was about 22, 23. So let me see. we got a question here. we got a question here. See, they're putting the questions in the chat room here. Will lifting my left foot help me get a better hip turn but keeping the spine angle? Mm. Yeah, I, and I, I love that thought for, for Jerry here. It's... um. It's going to allow him to turn the hips more for sure. Um, and that's really where hip turn comes from. Hip turn comes from your flexibility. And if you're not very flexible, then you're going to need to let your your knee and, and ankles and foot kind of um, have some more motion to it. It's one of the things we did in the Nicholas uh, program this winter is one of the drills was, you know, footwork and what the how the feet are related to the hips. And uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of, of allowing that to happen because most people really aren't flexible enough. Well, you look at Jack, I mean, you know, number one, he was only, I mean, he was stocky. He was a big guy, but he was only about 5'10". But, but he was really stocky and especially his lower body and his legs were so big that I think if he didn't lift his foot, he would have never gotten as much of a hip turn right as you see right there without his foot coming up. Where Azinger, because he's you know looks more like a two iron with a shut blade, he can get a he can get a hip turn 
without his foot coming up very much. So you got to look at each individual golfer. Like you said, is you know, it depends on your body type and how you are and um, whether you can make enough of a full turn without lifting the foot up, maybe that's an advantage. But if you can lift it up as long as it's all together, as long as it's all together, the ball's not going to know. If it gets faster than the rest of the swing, then you got a problem. In fact, I got a perfect example here, Darren. I got one for you, buddy. Buddy old pal. Let me see here. Go ahead and say something while I try and find a stupid thing. Uh, well, you're speaking a little bit about footwork. What's his name? Uh, Twirly Bird, uh, the young king. Who? You know what I'm talking about? Twirly Bird. Who's that? Now, Wolf. Yeah. Wolf, oh, yes. Wolf, that's yeah, it. Wolf, Thank Wolf. There you go. He um he lets that front foot come off the ground um mm -hmm. a, uh, to a, a a large extent, but it has not no no influence on his hip turn because he doesn't have a ton of a ton of it there. And and you know sometimes the footwork can be uh, a timing mechanism where it is with Matthew Wolf as opposed to maybe Nicholas or Jerry where it's more functional to allow the the hips to get a little bit more mobility. That's interesting, Darren, because Matt Wolf, a little bit I know about him. He, his coach is a guy by the name of Gankus, and that guy, all he teaches is rotate, 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 rotate your hips. Um, so, if Wolf doesn't have a big hip turn, that that's kind of surprising to me, because that's that's all he's taught. That's all he's been taught. So, is to clear you know, clear his hips. Yeah, and that's exactly. So, the hip turn kind of goes both ways. I'm speaking more of on the backswing, um, uh, and and Genkis, I, I know I know him well. Is he teaches everybody the same thing, you yeah. know, wide knees and and rotate your hips. Right. Uh, and Wolf does that extremely well in his downswing, but you know I, I've um, I've had conversations with a, a lot of people who have been with Genkis and Wolf at the same time, and that front foot going back is just more of a timing mechanism as opposed hmm. to a functional one where that he's allowing the hips to turn in the backswing. But in the downswing, you're absolutely right. He's got a tremendous amount. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at this, one of our students here, online students, now watch this. He's doing this elbow drill. Watch his arm go faster than the body. You see it? Watch it. The arm, if the arm, if the body was going the same speed as the arm, the butt of that golf club would still be pointed at his belly button. He should be turned this way. He should be turning at the same speed. In fact, I could keep my arm and my hand perfectly still and just turn my body, and that way I'll have the club in the same position right in front of my stomach. See? He let the arm go off without the body. So now I think the technical term is it's discombobulated. You know, you want everything together. So here, you now he's gone off. His arm took off and the body went, whoa, wait for me. See, then, but watch how beautifully he did this. Look at that. Now that's as good as it gets right there. He stayed perfectly still, kept that elbow right there, perfectly still. The only thing uh, I asked him to work on, is you look right here, even at, where is he, Immelman? Immelman, I'm always picking on Immelman. Poor Immelman, he's probably, who, where, I haven't seen him in years. See, his body's turning at the same rate of speed. If you look at Bernhardt, you'll see his body turns at the same rate of speed. See, see his shoulders, see his chest, see? So then the club is still pointing that way. That's why I always say I take it back with my chest, I bring it down with my arms. I take it back with my chest, I bring it down with my arms. I take it back with my chest, I bring it down with my arms. I want the club and my chest to all be together on the way back, and then I get rid of the golf club. And I beat the arms, I beat, I beat the body to the ball. Which may feel like casting to a lot of you, but it's not casting. Cast Darren's buddy, Jack Nicholas. Yeah. Right, Darren? Oh, yeah. See that? And so many people 
But I mean, I don't care where you go. You see all these. I mean, look, Darren, you go tell them the story about the golf pro at the at, the, at your place at the Bear Club. It was trying to hold a hold the angle. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was funny. Uh, but before I, uh, you know, that John Sinclair webinar we did a, a, a couple months ago is so valuable. And if you haven't heard that yet, you need to go and watch it and watch it a couple times and listen, because Sinclair talks about that first move on the downswing and how there is, um, he calls it uh, the radi radial deviation and ulnar deviation. And um, and that's the first things that's happening at, at the top of the swing with all good players is they're throwing the golf club from there. But, you know, I had one gentleman working with us at the Bears Club, and he was teaching a student just the opposite of trying to hold the angle. And Jack is watching all this going on, and he runs over there, and he's like, well, why would you do that? And um, it was a little embarrassing for the instructor, but he's he's a great instructor. Jason Carbone, he's a Baltimore, has been there forever. But um, that was not something Jack liked. He did not like what he'd call downcock, right? Holding the angle, that's downcock. You have any downcock, you're in trouble. Yeah, you, you've got to be awfully slow to wait for that. To, I mean, you've you got to square the golf club up. And the longer the club and the lesser the loft, the earlier you got to do it. You can get away with a wedge trying to hold the angle or getting the hands in front of the ball because the club's built that way and you can trap it and this, that, and the other. But you got a driver, you better get that club head around and out in front of you. You might even feel like the club head's past your hands at impact. Remember, Darren, you were you were saying to some guy set up with the driver that see, like look at look at Bernhard here. You were moving the hands back. See, look at that. This is an old video of Bernhard. And look at his grip compared to how it was. You look at his grip there. Look at his left hand grip here. And then look at his left hand grip in this other picture. No comparison. Look at the left, look at the glove on the left hand. He had a much stronger grip. And when I knew him, he had a he had, you know, he used to hook everything. Everything. When he was young, he hooked everything. Big old rope and hook. I remember him, I still remember it like it was yesterday. He was pulling his little we were out playing together, they had little hand carts. And um He's pulling his hand card. He looks back at me. He goes, Bobby, how do you hit the ball so straight? I said, I don't know. <laughs> I have no freaking idea. I just hit it. <laughs> I said, I don't know. I mean, back then, I didn't know. I was 21, 22 years old. I just knew what felt good, what felt bad. And and you you really felt your timing. You knew that, you, hey, I got to get that club head around. I got to get it around. I, you know. Well, you know, that's a lot it's a funny, it's, yeah, it's a funny um, uh, way to look at it there, Bobby, because, you know, Langer's got how many? Three masters? Yep. And and you have zero masters. And, and yeah. <laughs> what I mean by <laughs> that is, up. What, what I mean by that is, is that, you know, good players, players who are winning the masters, they don't hit the ball straight. They play with curve because they know where the ball's going. But um, it's it's a it's an eye opening thought for most people that come and take a lesson and are on the range. They're trying to hit the ball straight, or you know, good players are trying to control where the ball starts and and where it ends up, and they're never the same. If, if, well, never starts and ends up in the same spot. I tell you, I, the... I really miss the old ball where we could really work it a lot better. The newer ball is just hard to. It's not as easy to work the ball left to right, right to left, hit it low, hit it high. It just doesn't, doesn't. it's not the same. We used to have a much higher spin ratio, so you could put a lot more curvature on the ball. And, and imagine even earlier than that in the 50s when Hogan was around. I he mean, was on, uh, uh, Bernard Langer was on uh, School of Golf last night, and he was talking about his early days compared to his, now at the senior tour, and he said that uh, he was hooking the ball. It was really bothering him a whole lot because he, he couldn't seem to straighten it out. And he said as he got older, he went into a more neutral grip and he kept his lower body quiet, quieter. Whereas in, when he first started out, he had a reverse C 
And um, he said if he ever tried doing that at, at his age right now, to, he'd ruin his back. <laughs> well, his conditioning is tremendous. I mean, he's the he's the Gary player of Germany. I mean, he's he's in much better condition than anybody on the senior tour, practically. And uh, he's a really good guy. He used to come down to Spain where I was uh, as the pro, and, and he used to come down with a guy named Klaus that used to uh, chaperone him or something. <laughs> yep, Klaus. Klaus and Ben Hatt. We used to have a good time. He was he was always, always a good kid. Very quiet. Very quiet, methodical. And stayed focused. Where I, I, you know, if there wasn't a party going on, I made sure I started one. <laughs> <laughs> they go to a hotel. They go to a hotel and they say, "Where's Lopez?" He said, "Just look for the guy with a lampshade on his head. He's in the lobby somewhere. <laughs> He's over by the lobby bar. You'll find him." Where Bernhard wasn't that way, so. But I had fun. I can tell you that. Had a good time. Any other questions? Or not? We'll call it a day. All right, let's call it a day. Hopefully this helps you. Let me see if there's any one other question in the chat room here before we go. Turn the hips as opposed to letting them drift too far forward. Well, I don't think that the hips drift forward. I think the problem is one believes that the surge of body weight or their turn to transfer your weight makes them move laterally. Because in reality, there's more weight on your right foot than your left foot at impact. Uh, again, the only way I can describe it in my swing is I feel like I'm like the left cheek of my fanny is headed for my right heel, right off the bat. Boom. At the top of the backswing, on the backswing, my right hip is going towards my left heel, and then on the downswing, the left hip's going towards the right heel. I try to turn my hips in the smallest space possible, which is not easy for my hips. <laughs> 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 He's swinging the barrel, so you better get a whole full book, buddy. <laughs> oh, well. All right. I thought it was funny. <laughs> see, see you guys later. All right. Thanks, Bobby. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.